All right, so uh, May is Volcano Awareness Month, and this is the time when you can channel your inner volcanologist to learn about these active volcanoes in your backyard. Now, Volcano Awareness Month is held in May because that's also the anniversary of a very important eruption in Washington State. Mount St. Helens erupted on May 18th, 1980. In fact, if you were here at the time, most people will be able to tell you where they were when Mount St. Helens erupted. And so here at the Cascades Volcano Observatory, we monitor Mount St. Helens. That's one of the volcanoes that we monitor. They're part of the Cascade Range. There's five volcanoes in Washington. Uh, if you've driven up I-5 or any of the major freeways, you've seen them. You've seen Mount Baker, Glacier Peak, Mount Rainier, Mount Adams, Mount St. Helens. In Oregon, you have Mount Hood. You have Jefferson, Three Sisters, Newberry, and Crater Lake. These are all active volcanoes. So here at the Cascade Volcano Observatory, we monitor these volcanoes. We set out seismometers to detect earthquakes. We set out GPS systems to figure out if the ground is moving up or down. We measure gases at these volcanoes. And what we're finding is that each of them has a magmatic system beneath them. It's all simmering away right now, but if the conditions are right, they could erupt again. So the idea behind Volcano Awareness Month is to tell people about the volcanoes in their backyard and to have them go out and explore, find out what might happen. Are you in an area that could be at risk for a hazard during the next eruption? And what would you do if suddenly you were told that a volcano was waking up? We might have a couple of months of warning before or the next eruption. If we think back to Mount St. Helens, there was two and a half months of precursory activity, activity before the big eruption. We had a sudden and dramatic increase in earthquakes. There was steam and ash blasts from the summit. And then, of course, the big dramatic eruption on May 18, 1980. Scientists did notice this bulge, this deformation going on on the north flank that suddenly failed to uncork the volcano released this lateral blast. There was a huge eruption plume that went up into the air, and the wind was blowing that day to the east, to the eastern part of the state. And so people who were in the Tri-Cities, people who were in Spokane, in Idaho, they are the ones that experienced ash. In fact, I was there um, in Cheney, Washington, at Eastern Washington University, and I was the one who saw some of that ash cloud coming my way. It was huge. It was this strangest ash cloud you have ever seen that covered the sky from horizon to horizon moving my way. And at that time, if you think 1980, um, there wasn't the, the news cycle that we have today where you could report immediately. So it wasn't until my neighbor came out around noon and said, hey, the volcano erupted, that I said, what? Uh, why is this ash cloud coming my way? We live, what, five hour drive away from Mount St. Helens, but we had ash. And so that led us here at the Cascade Volcano Observatory to realize that there can be hazards way beyond the footprint of the volcano. At the volcano, you could have hazards like potential for lava flows, you could have mud flows, you can have ash, but also farther away, downwind, you can have ash falling. You can also have uh, lahars or volcanic mud flows flowing down river channels. This happened on May 18, 1980, when some of these lahars and these mud flows were flowing down the Toodle River. River. The Toodle empties into the Cowlitz, the Cowlitz empties into the Columbia, and what had happened on that day is there was a ship that ran aground in the Columbia River Channel because this channel that was supposed to be 39 feet deep had started to fill up with some of these deposits from the eruption. So instead, it was 13 feet deep. So the Columbia River was closed for two weeks while the Army Corps of Engineers came to dredge this. So we realized there are a lot of hazards, potential hazards to these eruptions, not just close in, but far away. So it's important that people understand where they're living. They understand if there are hazards that could affect them. Them. These could be primary hazards like the ash fall or like the lahar, or they could be secondary hazards. You have to expect that roads could be closed. It might be difficult to make cell phones, uh, cell phone calls, and so there can be secondary impacts to these. So the entire Pacific Northwest should be ready for a volcanic eruption.